gonna, I'm gonna start really basic here and really simple. So the first thing you have to know is that only business and rental income can ever be passive. Investment income, we basically have four, uh, you think about it, we have four types of income, okay? We have, um, first of all, you have earned income. That's uh, your, your regular business if you're a Schedule C. That's, um, that's subject to Social Security taxes. That's your W-2 income. That's earned income. That's taxed at the highest rate. Then what you have is, the next type is ordinary income. And ordinary income actually has to be broken down into two types of income. One is business income, which is ordinary income. And one is non-business income. For example, pension plan or a private sharing plan or 401k, retirement income. That's ordinary income, tax at ordinary income rates. It's never business income, okay? So then we have what we call investment income. Are things like interest, uh, dividends, um, capital gains, okay? And I'm, ta I'm not talking about capital gains from real estate. That's a 1231 gain. That's actually a business income. I'm talking about all you do is invest, okay? It's a pure investment, dividends, interest, uh, capital gains from stock, for example. Those are investment income, all right? And then what we have is we have this category that we call passive. But, but passive is almost not its own category. And the reason is that passive only relates to business income only okay it never relates to investment income and never relates to non-business income and it never relates to earned income okay so it's only business income that it relates to that's really important to understand and rental real estate is a business for this, these purposes okay so that means you're you're regular like you're a doctor and you have a, a you know a medical uh, you know, you've got your company, your, your PA or your, your PLLC, um, that income is going to be business income. You have income, you know, you're a dentist or you're a, um, or, or you're, you're a manufacturer or you're an online retailer. I mean, these are all business incomes, okay? So you're in, you're in a trade or business. Stock investment, not business income. That's investment income. Even if you're a professional stock investor, okay? So even if you're a professional stock trader. Okay, so now that you've got that piece, now you can go to the next piece. So you have business income as a category by itself. And again, we're going to include, we're going to include real estate in business income. Now, if you're a real estate developer, that's actually a different type of, that's a regular business income versus real estate rental, which is kind of a subset of this, okay? But business income basically can be broken down into active and passive. If all you have is income from all of your businesses, this is a distinction that has no implications at all, okay? The only implications is when you have a passive loss, okay? Because a passive loss cannot offset active income. An active loss can offset any kind of income, including capital gains and investment income, earned income. Active income can, can offset any kind, active loss can offset any other kind of income. All right, so that's really important. So active income is the best. And so when we talk about real estate professional, what we've done is, we've converted passive into active by being a real estate professional. That's all we've done. Now, that's great because now your losses are unlimited, right? They can offset anything. So that's why real estate professional can be so good. But of course, a lot of people are always gonna be passive investors. I'm one of them, okay? With respect to a, a syndication, I'm never gonna be a real estate professional. I, I, 
I'm not going to. My I have a I have a full time business, multiple full time businesses. My wife has a full time business. Neither one of us want to be a real estate professional. That's not going to happen. That doesn't mean we can't use our passive losses, and that's um that is the biggest mistake I hear um, from uh, CPAs and tax advisors who are doing tax returns for real estate that have real estate losses and they're going, well, it's a passive loss, so you can't use it. That is not the rule, but that's not the rule. The rule is a passive loss can only offset passive income. So it's a, think of it, think about like capital losses. Capital losses can only offset capital gains. Passive losses can only offset passive income. It's a bucket.